Do you use social media? I'm sure you do. Apart from keeping in touch and networking mainly on Facebook and Twitter, there is more to than that. Social media in this current day and age is a significant tool and today we'll look at how the role of social media, particularly in this year's general elections and what it really has to offer. But first, let's find out what social media really is and how it's growing. Social media, from what I understand, is uh, the new frontier to media. Because of the fact that it's very interactive, uh, it utilizes various platforms, and it's quite unique in the sense that it's driven by the user, user-driven, not as uh, the typical media where you have journalists, where you have different influences, but it's that interactive aspect and also driven by the, uh, the users, so which is more or less customers for businesses and um, possible voters for political parties. The seminar was about what we had been observing of social media campaigning strategies and social media campaigning tools that different parties use. Key question was, wow, how does social media fit into the political campaigning? And that was quite obvious from the get-go. And also, how are they using it? And why? why? Why should it be so important? And a number of reasons why it's so important. Number one, as it was shown in the seminar, 70%, we've established that from the research, 70% of uh, Facebook users in Fiji are young people within the ages of 18 to 35. So the young voters, the most impressionable ones, the easy ones to influence in a way, uh, majority of them you can just get them in a one-stop shop so it's sort of like walking into a candy store and your fat kid walk into a candy store you know where to get what you want so as a political party you know where to get you want what you want just right then then the other thing is how innovative it is with the expense of information technology how almost anyone as you see in the research 96 percent mobile subscriptions is in the country so almost anyone has the capability to get online and so forth so we really wanted to show how this relationship played out between the voters the political parties, how the political parties did what they had to do, and which political parties too were not switched on. For instance, Fiji Labour Party only got their pages up and running, and then from the discussions we found out that they actually were not getting paid, uh, those young people that were to coordinate the pages. So those bits of information we really wanted to document, because we noticed when there's something new in Fiji's political history, it's not documented. So that we can document it now, and hopefully by 2018, people don't end up going, what? We never saw this coming. So that we can actually frame this and have projections for it as well. Yeah. I don't think so. At this particular point, I really don't think so. The reason why I don't think so is because of the fact that print media, the traditional media, still holds a lot of sway. We actually were starting to think like that because of the responses coming in close to elections, that things were going to turn, not in favor of Fiji First, so to speak, as a sort of an observation point. But what we noticed was that the print media is still very influential. People still believe or still are influenced by Fiji Sun's headlines. People are still very much influenced by the obviously impartial talkback shows, right? Yeah, sorry, biased talk, talk back shows, so to speak. So social media does, is, is climbing up, but is not there yet. And maybe it can, but for now, no. One of the key reasons is penetration levels are still not as high as people would hope it should be. The penetration level of, for instance, Fiji Sun, Fiji Times, the, the traditional media is still far bigger. So that is why, at this point, I don't see social media actually outpacing traditional media. Independent candidate in the 2014 general elections and the recipient of the International Women of Courage Award, Roshika Deo, is no stranger to social media. She was the first candidate to campaign on Facebook, but she was not spared from the dark side of it. It was scary. In the beginning when we started, when I started receiving threats, and this was, I think, the first threat I got was when Fiji Sun did the, Fiji Sun did the coverage of my intention to stand for elections. And I think this was still around June, July, just around the time we started Facebook. And people started sharing that article on different forums that was already uh, present in Facebook. And then all of a sudden, people started commenting. And it was, um, it was uh, scary. I got a lot of rape threats. Um, I got a lot of uh, racist attacks. Um, there was, of course, the usual ageist, um, you know, ageist attacks, like a lot of prejudice. But the majority of the threats and the majority of the attacks I got was all misogynistic. It was things like um, take her to the cassava patch and teach her a lesson because um, she doesn't know how to respect older men. 
and, it were, and this were all young people with actual profile. Mind you, a lot of the threats that I got were from actual profiles. I think maybe one or two out of the maybe 30 or 20 uh, profiles that were being used that were fake. But majority of the threats was from actual profile. And it was from young men. And uh, most of the misogynist attack that was uh, premised on attacks to your sexual integrity was by people of a particular ethnic group. I think that maybe for a certain group of people, yes. I don't think it will be for everyone because uh, there were so many places we went where there's no electricity even. So people rely on the radio. Radio is still considered um, and still used by a lot of our people as the main source of information. Um, TV, not so much. Newspaper, not so much, but uh, definitely the radio. Uh, I think that uh, for urban-based young people, yes, I think social media is taking more dominance. I mean, personally, I don't buy the newspaper anymore. I just go online or I find whatever excerpts are shared by people on social media and that's how I follow up the news. So that's my primary source of news. Yes, even if there's an article in the newspaper, I'll go online. So it's not necessarily social media, but say for instance, if I'm on Twitter and I see PG Times just share, tweeted about something, so then I'll go and read. So that's how I'm now accessing my news. Um, and uh, I think that that's what's going to happen, it's evolving um, in that way. Well, it depends on how you look at it. Eh? If you look at uh, racially motivated speeches, that's obviously a, a bad way. If you look at the fact that there's more expression of freedom and, and there's capabilities for the public sphere to expand and engagement, that's a good thing. I think it depends on how you look at it, whether it is good, whether it is bad. From our observations, considering the lead up of the political environment, uh, I'm sure as a journalist student yourself, considering the, the issues of the media decree, considering the various issues that obviously limit the work, the expression, the engagement of people. Social media is looked at as a good thing. But when you have people, one or two, it's not a big number, but one or two or three people that have to muck it up for everyone, <laughs> that casts a bad light on everyone else. So everyone get cast in this uh, suspicion, right? Or are you forming that group? Will you have the, those sort of racist people, you know? And so people who genuinely want to do research or genuinely want to get you know, cohesive, constructive discussions, they will have to consider those. So it depends on how you look at it, but considering the repressive particular stances that we've had to go through, it is a godsend in a way. But, I mean, I'm saying that not looking at the racially motivated issues. If you look at that, then obviously it's going to be bad, yeah. I think that social media exposes, to a certain extent, what we are really, how we are really. Uh, why I say that, I mean, if I just take into consideration the misogyny, we experience that in communities too. Social media was more because it's more accessible by people and people just feel more courageous and brave because they're not face to face with someone. Let's have a look at the social media effect in the 2012 United States elections. As we're seeing this more and more these days, social media played a pivotal role in the election last night. Twitter and Facebook were lit up as the results poured in. Where's my phone? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> never, you're never without it. Even the president celebrated his hard-fought victory with a simple tweet. Here is the picture. You can see the president and first lady hugging, and then he extended that bipartisan tone, saying we're all in this together. That's how we campaigned, and that's who we are. Thank you. Signed. B.O. B.O. That means it was Barack authentically Obama. from him. I think I saw some stat where that was the most retweeted tweet ever, that ever. picture that went out. So it showed you kind of just how social media takes on a life of its, mm -hmm. of its own here. Also some interesting stats uh, to show you here I thought was interesting. Uh, apparently 80% of the people in America get their political news online these days. So, it. you know, where everyone's you know, hooked into their laptops and their cell phones and they get all of that. It's the ADHD and, generation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Excuse me. So 80% of that, that's a very telling stat. Also, with 20 million tweets, Election Day just became the most tweeted about event ever in the political history of the country. That's pretty telling. I think the old record from a few weeks ago was mm -hmm. the first debate. Now the election, of course, surpassed that. Then 65,000 political tweets per minute during this. Everywhere. I, I was glued to Twitter. I was, most people learned their news and what state was going to who uh, through uh, through Twitter and then also Instagram which is the photo site 
pretty popular, owned by Facebook. 600,000 photos associated with the uh, with the vote. So in terms of those little I voted yeah. stickers, people posted. So you, all of this just played out online. Social media is definitely more than meets the eye. It is a significant and growing tool which will do wonders in the years to come. Natasha Begum for Once a While.